Hey everyone, my name is Xavier and in this video we're going to continue working on the little blockchain that we built in the last video. Right now we can create new blocks really quickly. All we have to do is create a transaction, compute its hash and add it to an array. Now modern computers can do that incredibly quickly, but we don't want people to create hundreds of thousands of blocks per second and spam our blockchain. There's also a security issue. You can change the contents of a block and then simply recalculate the hashes for all the blocks after that and you will end up with a valid chain, even though you tampered with it. Now obviously that's not what we want. So to solve these issues, blockchains have something that is called proof of work. With this mechanism, you have to prove that you've put a lot of computing power into making a block. This process is also called mining. So how can we implement something like this? Well, Bitcoin, for example, requires the hash of a block to begin with a certain amount of zeros. And because you cannot influence the output of a hash function, you simply have to try a lot of combinations and hope you get lucky with a hash that has a sufficient number of zeros in front of it. So this requires a lot of computing power. This is also called the difficulty and it is set so that there is a steady amount of new blocks. In Bitcoin's case, the aim is to create one new block every 10 minutes. Now, as computers get faster over time, they will require less time to mine a new block. To compensate for that, the difficulty will simply be increased. All right, so enough talking and let's implement this. In our block class, I'm going to add a new method called mineBlock. And this will take a property called difficulty and inside this method, we will try to make the hash of our block begin with a certain amount of zeros. Now for that, I need a while loop that uh, keeps running uh, until our hash starts with enough zeros. Now to do this, I'm going to start by taking a substring of our hash and I'm going to start uh, at character zero and I'm going to go all the way up to difficulty. So if difficulty is set to five, uh, this will take uh, the first five characters of our hash and we're gonna keep running as long as this part of our hash is not equal to uh, all zeros. And to do that, I'm going to create a new array of length difficulty plus one, and I'm going to join it with the character zero. So this is just a quick trick to make uh, a string of zeros that is exactly the length uh, of difficulty. Now inside this method, we will of course calculate the hash of this block. So we're going to say that the hash of this block equals this dot calculate hash. And at the end of this method, after the while loop, we're going to say block mines, and then we're going to print the hash of the block that we just mined. But now there is an issue. The hash of our block won't change if we don't change the contents of our block. So essentially this right here is now an endless loop. Okay, but you might now think, what can we change inside of our block? We cannot go and change the index or the previous hash or the timestamp, and we can't even change the data because if this is a transaction, then we need to change our amount or recipient. Well, blockchain solved this by adding a nonce value. This is a random number that doesn't have anything to do with your block, but it can be changed to something random. So I'm going to add it to our block here. I'm gonna say this.nonce equals zero. And in our while loop, I'm just going to increment this number one by one. So I'm gonna say this.nonce plus plus, we're gonna increment it as long as our hash uh, doesn't start with enough zeros. Now there's one more thing that we need to do in our calculate hash function here. Uh, we're actually not taking uh, this nonce variable into account. So I'm just going to add it right here. All right, problem solved. Now let's use this new system in our blockchain class and see how it works. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to change the add block method. What this does right now is it just takes a new block, it sets the previous hash, it calculates its hash, and then it just pushes it on to our chain. Now I'm gonna remove this line here and instead I'm gonna say new block dot mine block. And here I need to pass it the difficulty. 
Now I might need difficulty in other places in the future. So I'm going to add it as a property to our blockchain. So I'm going to say that this dot difficulty equals two, for example, and then I'm going to pass the difficulty right here. All right, let's scroll all the way down. Let's actually use it. I'm going to remove the code from the previous video here. I'm just going to keep these three lines. I'm going to add a few console log statements here. I'm going to say mining block one dot dot dot. Copy that line, do the same thing for the second one. So we can see what's actually going on. And I'm going to save the file. I'm going to open up the terminal. Let's run this right now. I'm going to say node main.js. And as you can see, the hashes of our blocks now start with two zeros. And that is because we set the difficulty to two. However, you also saw that it happened really quickly. A spammer could still easily generate many fake blocks or someone could tamper with our entire chain. So to counteract this, we just increase the difficulty. So I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to increase it from two to four. I'm going to save the file and run it again. And now you can see that it already takes a lot longer to mine our blocks and our blocks now start with four zeros instead of two. So using this mechanism, we can control how fast new blocks can be added to our blockchain. That was it for this video. Now you know what proof of work is, why it is essential for the safety of a blockchain and how you can implement it. I'll include a link to the source code in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.